Hey gang, in this video, I'm gonna go over the CompTIA question types. Hey gang, it's Ron from itmasterkey.com and my job is to get each and every one of you guys certified. So in this video, we're gonna go over the different types of questions that you're gonna see on a CompTIA exam. So what is CompTIA? CompTIA stands for the Computer Technology Industry Association, and it actually provides some of the most in-demand tech certifications, such as A+, Net+, Security+, and a lot of other certifications. So here are some of the question types to expect on the exam. So the first type is a performance-based question, or a PBQ. So unlike regular exams or regular tests where it's pretty much a question, then it's multiple choice, you have to figure out what the answer is. With this, you actually actually perform a function. So PBQs are also known as simulations. With these, you have to be very, very, very specific and make sure that you understand what it wants you to do and whatever it wants you to do, make sure you actually perform that function. So with the PBQs, a lot of times, that's usually the first thing that you see on the exam. So you'll go through a small little survey, you'll fill some stuff out, and then boom, when you actually get inside of the test, that's gonna be the first thing you see. For example, it may say something like, make this network as secure as possible. And that may mean that you have to change some settings inside of the firewall, or change some settings inside of the router, change some settings inside of the devices. You have to actually perform something. So with the PBQs, a lot of people get scared, their stomachs start hurting, they start sweating, they don't know what to do. Do not be intimidated. These PBQs are the same stuff you've been studying. Only difference is you gotta actually implement the things that you've been studying. Now I will say this, on most of the exams, you're gonna get three to five PBQs. These PBQs are worth way more than all the other questions. For example, you're gonna have 90 questions most likely on your exam. Now, when you get to the end of the exam, it, say, it may say 70, 75 questions. You're like, damn, I thought it was 90 questions total. The remainder of the value of those 15 or 20 questions came from the PBQs. Does that make sense? So one of the PBQs may be worth seven to 10 of the regular questions. So just make sure that you spend time on those and you think critically about what it's asking you. Now, I will say this, a quick little pro tip if you get on the exam and have no idea what the PBQ is asking you to do, just skip the shit. So skip them and then come back to them at a later time. So the actual exam is timed, right? You don't have all day to be lollygagging and messing around. So you don't want to spend 20, 30, 45 minutes staring at a screen and don't know what's going on. And then when you get inside the actual test, you don't have enough time to finish the test. And more good news is that if you skip the PBQs, a lot of times the questions that's inside of the exam may spark something, may make you remember something. Like, oh, okay, that's what they were trying to ask me. And then just go back to them at the end. Another side note is the PBQs won't give you any indication, no indication at all if you've done anything right. No bells are gonna go off. It's not gonna say, great, good job. If you don't do anything at all and click next, it's gonna let you go to next. If you do Everything that you're supposed to do and you try and go to next, it's gonna let you go to next. So it's completely up to you. So the next question type is gonna be multiple choice questions. Now this is probably what you're used to. It's just a standard test question. You've been doing this since you was in elementary. Now, one thing I want you to pay close attention to is that the different variations of multiple choice questions, right? So some of the questions may say, choose two, choose three, choose all that apply. I implore you to follow those directions. If it says choose two, choose two. If it says choose three, choose three. If it says choose all that apply, that means that if it's five options, that doesn't necessarily mean that all of them apply. It just means that choose the ones that apply to that situation. Now, if you ever get to these questions and you're not sure, you don't know what's going on, Answer it anyway, there's a 50-50 chance that you might have it right. So go ahead and choose the ones that you think are right. The next question type is gonna be fill in the blank. So with these types of questions, you literally have a question or a comment that's gonna have a blank spot and you have to fill in the blank. With these types of questions, you just simply input whatever word or phrase 
fills in that blank to make that statement or that question correct. Okay, last but not least, gang, is drag and drop. So with drag and drop, you have to literally drag the answer to a specific portion of the screen. It may be something like putting things in alphabetical order or putting things in order from most important to least important. It may also be as sophisticated as you having to drop parts into a motherboard or having to rearrange networks or rearrange IP addresses. With the drag and drops, it's simply gonna be a picture or some kind of item that you see and just need to drag and drop it. So in my last video, I actually gave you guys a lot of game on how to not only pass your certification, but to get into IT. So if that sounds like it's something that's important to you, make sure you watch my last video. It's probably popping up somewhere around here. Also, I want to thank everyone who has joined the program. We've had a major uptick since 2022. I'm glad you guys are starting your journey and I'm glad to be a part of it. Other than that, I'll see you in class.